Thank you everyone for coming to this session today. Our topic is going to be, as you saw, ethics in the cloud. Um, first, don't laugh at me if I butcher my Chinese. I'm trying, <laughs> but do correct me. Um, hello, welcome. Get seated, you're just on time. So, Dai Jia Hao, Huaying. Hello and welcome everyone. <laughs> oh wow, you guys are so nice. <laughs> um, so I'm Kiana, a product leader at Red Hat. Um, but outside of that, I advocate on the intersection of technology and human diversity, and I lead communities of hundreds of underrepresented diverse professionals across the African and Latinx diaspora, ranging from New York City to globally. Um, funny story, I actually started off with an anthropology background. Don't know how I ended up in technology, but it happened, and I'm enjoying it. Um, but with that being said, in technology, we often look at it, especially AI, as it's only a subject for engineers, but it, it's, a, it's not. We need more humanities, we need more of the arts. As many different industries that we can get into technology, it's ever more important because without it, we will not be able to have a diverse input when it comes to building inclusive data sets and to addressing um, huge problems in technology today. So um, I wanna appreciate the, the Linux Foundation for recognizing this and allowing the platform an invitation to speak. Uh, and also as one of the 3% of uh, black and Latina women in tech, I'm super passionate about building technology with and for underserved consumers of all backgrounds and abilities. I believe that everyone deserves not just access to technology, but input into building it. So, overview of today's talk. Now, I'm excited to discuss a topic that's not only at the forefront of technology, but is also a topic that is deeply personal to me, and that is AI ethics. Our discussion today revolves around the responsible development of AI with consideration of the cloud, but also look at the impact on the world as a whole. I will be specifically looking at autonomous vehicle as the example in this talk, so that we can have a direct example of what ethics looks like in action and in practice. So we will also review ethics at play within China and then zoom out to the broader Asian AI ethics landscape. I like to tailor my talks to the region that I'm in. Finally, we will also have a group exercise on AI ethics where you all will be involved. So as leaders, do be prepared to engage today. Class is in session. I know you guys came here to listen, but this is a, not a monologue, this is a conversation. <laughs> so. Um, with that being said, uh, AI, as I mentioned, is a living and breathing field, so it's imperative that we have more conversations, not just presentations. So let's start with that today. Let's take 60 seconds to say hello to the person nearest to you whom you didn't come with. And starting now, Kai Gong, is that right? Hopefully. Say hi. Say hi. Yes, intro, go, go, go. Yay, networking, I love it. Hello, welcome. Okay. Hello, welcome, don't be scared, I don't bite. I just wear purple dresses apparently, but. Hey, hey, you guys came to the party, let's go, okay. Yes, 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 that too. You guys also have to introduce, did you guys just all come together? No, yes, do you know each other? If so, <laughs> we're just doing intros right now, that's why I'm asking, just cool. So now that we got to know each each other a bit more. Are you guys ready? Okay. Now that we got to know each other more, I'm gonna ch share a true story of someone very close to me that relates to our topic today. By the way, advanced warning, there may be a trigger warning of some sensitive um, photos here. If you're sensitive to medical images, do look away. This is related to our topic on autonomous vehicles and the impact on humanity. So just as a heads up. So without further ado, on a beauty, beautiful sunny day at San Francisco Bay, the birds were chirping, the sun was glowing over the water at golden hour, and a young woman went for what she thought was a short test drive, not knowing her life was about to change forever. In an instant, everything went dark. A distracted driver accelerating at full speed while glued to their phones crashed over 300 pounds of metal directly into the young woman's leg. 
One poor human decision transformed that sunny day into an absolute nightmare, nearly ending that innocent woman's life abruptly. In the aftermath of the crash, the woman sustained one of the most complicated fractures that occur only in 1% of cases worldwide. She was told she risked amputation and that she may never walk again. Her bones were not only crushed to pieces, but her soul went the wrong long with it. But in this tragedy, there's hope in the story. After multiple surgeries and months fighting to regain her strength, she defied all odds and relearned to walk again, even shocking her medical team. After being confined to a hospital bed and wheelchair for over a thousand hours, she went from hopeless after a bleak medical diagnosis to now accomplishing what was once thought as impossible. And recently, she traveled 8,000 miles away from her home on her own two feet out of the most devastating accident of her life. I think we could all can agree, that woman is a warrior. And that woman is me. Although I got enough metal in me to be in the comics alongside Iron Man and Wolverine. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Kiana Berry, and I am a walking miracle. So since the accident, well, as the old Chinese proverb goes, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Since the accident, I gained a new nickname by friends and family called Bionic Berry, <laughs> but I also gained a new sense of purpose. And my next goal is to walk the Great Wall of China and more importantly, my new mission in life is to make sure that no one has to suffer unnecessarily at the hands of human error like I did. I have the privilege to be standing to tell my survivor story made possible largely in parts to advancements in medical technology. Many do not get the second chance at life. In the US alone, every 13 minutes, someone dies in a car crash, all due to preventable human errors. And that was almost me. How many here have been in or know someone who has been in a traffic accident? Show of hands. No one. OK. Well, the research states every year, 1.35 million people are killed, and 50 million are injured globally in road traffic accidents. From my personal experience, these estimates are conservative, as it does not even include accidents that occur on the water. Now, don't think because you've never been in an accident this doesn't affect you. The economic and social consequences of accidents are massive. Fatal and non-fatal crash injuries are estimated to cost the world economy approximately $1.8 trillion from 2015 to 2030 alone. Additionally, they cost developing countries between 3 and 5% of their GDP, thus jeopardizing their developmental prospects. So, China is at risk as the most populous developing country in the world and one of the world's largest automobile markets. Research shows there's 55,000 newly registered motor vehicles in China every day, and this is one of the main factors leading to increased road traffic deaths. What is the cause and death of injuries at road traffic accidents? Is anyone, can anyone guess? Simple human errors, like ranging from intoxicated driving, speeding, and other reckless driving behaviors. All things that are preventable. But within the sea of tragedy at the hands of senseless human error, there is a beacon of light when technology is built ethically and responsibly with everybody in mind. And I believe that light is autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles, also known as AVs, come into the potential to significantly reduce accidents by reducing human error. And human error alone is responsible for approximately 94% of crashes, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And these distractions can be simple as fatigue, impaired driving, and all other issues related to um, human errors behind the wheel. Some other benefits of AVs include advanced sensor technology, which will allow a 360 degree and awareness of the surroundings so that the technology is able to detect obstacles and pedestrians and other vehicles more effectively than humans can. Another benefit of AVs is the fact that with the use of AI machine learning, they can analyze data from various sources in the past and in the current to be able to react to potential future hazards. This predictive capability can enhance decision making in complex driving environments overall. And lastly, one thing about AVs is that they don't drink while they drive for one, they don't have road rage and shout at other autonomous vehicles, and they don't make sudden lane changes. So these are just some of the ways that AVs provide a solution here in reducing human errors and how we can see ethics at play here. Now, for those who are new to the autonomous vehicle scene, 
Are there any autonomous vehicle experts here, by the way? No? Okay, cool. So just as a, as a precursor to the subject, self-driving cars are sometimes called autonomous cars or driverless cars, it are simply the vehicles that use a combination of technology to travel between destination, destination without a human operator. AVs are equipped with a variety of sensors as you see, including cameras, radar, LIDAR, and GPS, all to perceive the environment. The way I see it is AI is like the brain of the machines to learn and make decisions based on data, while IoT, or Internet of Things, acts as a nervous system interconnecting devices and systems to collect and share data between uh, different vehicles. Overall, these sensors feed data into the vehicle's central computer system, which uses AI algorithms to process information and make driving decisions. The vehicle's architecture, as you've seen, it typically consists of several key components. Perception system, which detects and classifies objects. Prediction system, which forecasts the future behavior of detected objects. A planning system that generates an overall driving trajectory and a control system that executes the planned trajectory. Now, how does the cloud play a role in this? Well, the cloud is a core component of enabling development and deployment of ethical autonomous vehicles. And in this example, as you see here, um, this is a research study done by City Long and Wai Sung Shi. Hopefully not betraying your names, but um, in this example, you can see how the cloud here is acting as a place for storage, but it's also a, a place where analysis happens, particularly within when cars are driving over a bridge and making an assessment, are there any potholes? Is, is there any damage to the bridge? Is it safe to go across? And sending that data back to its computing system to then make a decision of whether it should continue. Um, and the edge plays a role here when further decision-making processes is required in order to determine whether the bridge is safe or not to cross. I don't know if anyone has been keeping up with the news, but there was a recent, I mean, even Pittsburgh, a bridge had crashed and, uh, or split in half and leading to hundreds of deaths. And uh, wouldn't you imagine a system that already implemented like this, where vehicles were able to detect before the bridge collapsed that this was gonna happen, how many, how many lives I would have saved? So this is the real ethical and the daily application of what, how these technologies can actually save lives. And the way the cloud platform is playing a role here is that it's providing the necessary infrastructure for secure storing and processing um, that is required for the vast amounts of data generated by um, autonomous AV sensors. Um, and this also allows for centralized data management and the implementation of robust privacy protection measures such as encryption and access controls to safeguard us user information. And this is a key integral part of the ethical piece here in the cloud. Uh, security is everything. Once the security is breached, then that means that someone can hack into your system. Anything with the internet can be hacked, which I'm sure you, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyways, cloud platforms provide the necessary infrastructure for um, scalable computing power, centralized model training, um, over-the-air updates, same as you get software updates on your phone, the vehicles also need updates, and the simulation and, and testing overall to run large-scale simulations required. Now, so I'm going to talk about some stories here. One in China, um, there was a problem where um, a man was crossing the road, and the autonomous vehicle actually hit him. And because he was jaywalking, there was a, a, de a debate in the country of, was he in the wrong, was the Thomas vehicle right? He was technically jaywalking, right? But at the same time, he's a human being. He doesn't deserve to get hit by a car just because he was doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. I'm pretty sure we all jaywalked at least once in our life, right? Yeah, so it just goes to show the cultural nuance that comes with these kinds of uh, ethical debates around technology. And it, go it transcends mere code this to create this type of outcome to actual the cultural nu um, nuance around the problem where in certain cultures it may be okay to prioritize the safety of the passenger versus the pedestrian. And in areas like China, that's actually the case where pedestrian safety or rather passenger safety is prioritized over pedestrian safety. Um, if you look at other countries, you'll see the reverse. So again, this just shows how it matters the, con the context of where we are and the country that we're at when we talk about ethics and re relate how it relates to decision making. Another instance, there's, there was actual research that was published that shown that uh, autonomous systems are not effective at recognizing individuals with darker skin tones and um, that they weren't as effective in recognizing small children. So again, could you imagine, would you want your children walking or cousins or any 
younger relative of yours walking the streets knowing that there's tons of vehicles going around and not even noticing them. That causes a, another hazard and um, wants something that we have to take into consideration when we're, again, looking at the ethical uh, question here of how technology is uh, implicated in everyday life. And finally, I don't know if you all have seen, apparently someone told me that there's a series on Netflix where someone had broke up with someone and in a result, they hacked into their car and crashed the car. And it just goes to show that although we think these dystopian Netflix-like plots are not real, people can actually hack your vehicles. And it's not to say that um, one would think that, you know, even with an autonomous vehicle, that they would have a little bit more protections or it's anything with an internet, you know, access can potentially access sensitive information, including your travel patterns, in your personal preferences, what music you listen to, all of that. That, that leads to violation of privacy rights. So that's another important ethical problem here. So just three stories here to, to highlight what ethics looks like in practice here. Now, bringing it to China, despite all these ex ethical challenges I was talking about, China still has been tackling the problem head on. And uh, swift progress in the field of autonomous driving technology that has propelled it to the forefront of the industry. Overall, this is a good thing in terms of augmenting mobility for vulnerable segments, such as the elderly and those with disabilities. The wide-scale adoption can cause a cascade of problems for reasons that I just mentioned. When these edge cases are not addressed in the data sets and are continuously to be deployed at a massive scale without addressing the core issues, this is, will only wreak havoc in the end. So um, China's aggressive approach to autonomous vehicles led by various factors, but just to summarize, as I poured over the research here, uh, government support and subsidies have been active in promoting development and testing of AVs through various uh, policies. And in June 2024, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology granted approval to nine automakers, including BYD, NIO, and state-owned manufacturers. Um, they conducted tests on vehicles with level three autonomous driving technologies on public roads, and the move was expected to pave the way for further commercialization. Wuhan was actually, I think you mentioned he's from Wuhan, was actually the city where they're having a huge wide a fleet of autonomous vehicles being deployed. Um, and during COVID, everything stopped, but they, uh, again, started, they're starting again to pick up speed on that. There's also involvement of large players. And here, like companies like Badu, Alibaba, Tencent, I'm sure you guys have all heard those names before, are all actively working on autonomous driving technologies, while automakers such as BYD and NIO, as I mentioned, are collaborating with these tech giants. That, and considering the fact that China is home to one of the world's largest data center, this is like a crucial component of autonomous driving technologies, because autonomous vehicles are data hungry, and that is how they get their fuel. They cannot live without that. So. Um, China has a lot of advantages right now and is leading the um, AV race. And, and interestingly enough, since we're in Hong Kong, in contrast to this, Hong Kong has been taking a more moderate approach in contrast to mainland China's aggressive approach um, as they, uh, the city has not yet granted approval for large-scale public road testing of AVs, focused instead more on smaller-scale trials and pilot projects to see if things work and adjust accordingly. Uh, this cautious approach is, you know, different, but it's, it shows you even within a geogra similar geographical area, you can have total culture shifts, um, and this is uh, something that we should all stay tuned for. Now, uh, in the race for AI development, the U.S. and China are not just vying for gold in the Olympics, <laughs> but they also want the gold in technology too. The competition between the United States and China in the fields of AI and autonomous vehicles is characterized by aggressive investment, strategic government policies, and a race for technology leadership. Both nations are vying for dominance, but their approaches are, are different, resulting in different ethical frameworks and overall their own regulatory responses to these technologies development. China's unique value proposition here is uh, their approach, as I mentioned already, is their government-driven initiatives, and also the fact that China benefits from a large consumer base and less stringent privacy regulations. Um, as you, I don't know if anyone is a, has WeChat, knows that all your data is definitely being trained, and um, allowed this allowing for extensive data collection utilization is gonna give China an advantage and particularly significant for training AI models, especially in applications like facial recognition. So, and also Chinese companies are adept at quick, quickly scaling technologies which can lead to rapid advancements in AV deployment. Um, so they have all the ingredients necessary to be successful there. So now how does the US fare against China? Well, 
the U.S. is particularly known for the move fast, break things culture, <laughs> where a culture of innovation and flexible regulatory environment encourages experimentation and rapid development. Um, the government in the U.S. also provides a lot of uh, funding and for AI research and also has a lot of agencies in the port of AI development. Uh, there's also a huge focus on generative AI, whereas the U.S. excels in developing generative AI systems such as lar large language models. And um, in addition to this, uh, I don't know if anyone has heard about the latest move by OpenAI or the restriction of uh, the APIs. Uh, this represents the U.S. further restricting China's reach and access to uh, our technology, which can have implications to come. Because if you restrict the technology, then it's only going to encourage people to want to develop it internally within their own country. I see you smiling in the back like, yup, I'm coming for you. <laughs> um, but yeah. So now we understand about the U.S. and China and how they're faring in the AI development race, what about the race for ethical regulations? Well, US and China don't just compete on innovation, but it's also on the regu regulation part as well. So overview of China, what they've been doing is in August 2023, China enacted the interim administrative measures for generative artificial intelligence services. This required providers to undergo government-led security assessments and adhere to strict content management guidelines. Um, there's also ethical reviews built into this process that regulates mandated ethical reviews for scientific activities involving AI, emphasizing responsible use and accountability. China's approach is characterized by a strong emphasis on state control and a proactive stance in addressing potential risks. The U.S., on the other hand, um, has a various regulatory frameworks from the National Institute of Standard and Technology, and they've been developing a framework for AI risk management as well. And the U.S. intelligence community has established the principles of artificial intelligence ethics and a framework to guide the development. So as you can see, while the U.S. focuses on a flex flexible, innovation-driven environment with increasing attention to ethical guidelines, China emphasizes on rapid scaling and state control. Now, how do the regulation and AI ethics stand to compare to other Asian countries? Well. I don't know if anyone has been following, but Singapore has emerged as a leader in AI governance, establishing a national AI strategy, which includes ethical guidelines and frameworks for responsible AI use. This country actually ranks third in the global AI index, re reflecting its commitment to AI ethics. Um, some of their most notable documentation is the model AI governance framework, which provides guidelines for organizations to ensure responsible AI deployment, emphasizing accountability, fairness, and transparency. They also have an AI testing framework, which promotes best practices in AI development. Um, also, the Association of South, Southeast Asian Nations, A ASEAN, has taken a collaborative approach to AI governance. They have released in February 2024 a guide outlining a voluntary um, and light touch approach to AI regulation, thus encouraging member states to consider cultural differences and ethical implications in AI development. For example, within that, Thailand has been making their own um, ethics and regulations to adapt to that within the ASEAN um, documentation set forth. Then now, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, there's, there's so much to go over, so many different countries and players, but let me summarize. Japan is investing 13 billion for 2023, and their country's focusing on ethical AI development. I don't know if you've, anyone has seen, they've been also using AI and ChatGPT in their government processes. So I don't know if you go to get a ticket or something, you might be talking to ChatGPT, I guess. But, um, and South Korea is also, uh, aiming to emerge as a leader with 470 billion over the next 23 years to create a leading manufacturing hub. They want to become a chip play player and be a big player in the semiconductor field. And Taiwan, um, as you, many of you may know, produces 60% of the world's semiconductors and over 90% of the most advanced ones. St they are still, ironically, developing their policy on ethics even though they are far advanced in this re um, regard. Now, with comparison with EU re regulations, as I'm sure some of you have heard of the EU AI Act, this was one of the largest, most forward uh, risk-based risk -based frameworks for AI governance. And some of the key compliance include mandates that AI systems comply with fundamental rights and values, but what makes them different from rules I just mentioned is that they actually impose penalties. They don't just say adhere to these rules, they're coming for you with money too. So, um, and they also focus on high risk applications. So they categorize it based on risk levels ensuring high risk systems go and undergo more rigorous assessments. Um, while the EU's approach is more prescriptive and regulatory, many Asian countries with the exception of China are adopting a more flexible and voluntary framework. So that's the differences we see here. Now. I want everyone to scan the QR code. There we go. Question one. You have two minutes. Discuss with the person next with you. 
The question is, is your opinion, in your opinion, what's the most pressing AI ethical issues facing the Asian open source community today? And right next to that is Google Translates Chinese, so don't judge. Well, last job, I felt that. If you can't think of anything, try discussing it with the person next to you to just brainstorm. The whole point of these conversations is that we also get our minds going around some of the unique use cases of the Asian market. And come on, guys, I gave you a lot of material. I know you got some ideas in there. That's fine if you don't have like one particular answer. Just point of the exercise is to get us thinking about what's unique about this particular market and how can we fix it, come together as a community to talk about it. All right, starting question two now. Define what AI ethics means to you within the diverse communities across Asia and the broader global open source community. This is just making a, a definition according to what you believe AI ethics means to you. Thank you all for participating. So what take your best guess of what AI ethics means. Then we gotta wrap it up here with the last question. There's no right answers here, by the way. And your answers are all, they should have been anonymous. Oh, they're mostly anonymous. Okay, let it give a second for the last couple of people typing and they're gonna move on to the last question and then wrap it up here. Got it. Okay, and the last question, what measures do you think should be implemented to continuously monitor and mitigate bias in AI systems? No pressure, take a wild guess, not a pop quiz. And the value of having these exercises is that we get to learn from each other. This is something AI cannot replace, real life community. So thank you again for participating. All right, so I'll let that one run. All right, so just to wrap it up here in a minute, and then we'll jump into the conclusion. Thank you all for being part of this community. Okay, head nods, I'm assuming you guys are all done. All right, so now for some key takeaways, I know I threw a lot at you at this topic today. There's, there's a lot going on within the regulation space. There's a lot going on within AI ethics. And there's also a lot just going on within China alone. You can do a whole case study on just China. 
But um, combining all what's going on within the Asian territories and the, and the, the ethical landscape, uh, four key takeaways for either business leaders or engineers is one, if you're designing a project currently or working internally on AI projects, first and foremost, prioritize transparency and, and accountability to build trust with both internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Trust is one of the key things that keeps coming up consistently in the research. Um, research shows only 9% of Americans trust autonomous vehicles and 33% of Chinese respondents are unwilling or unsure about even trusting AI in the first place. So your action item would be to implement clear policies that outline how AI systems operate, including decision-make processes, and use interpretable AI models, tools to ensure stakeholders understand AI outcomes. Your second thing is wherever you are, if you're starting an AI project, establish ethical guidelines and oversight that are tailored to the culture. And we can learn from the ASEAN's guiding principles for ethical governance, where they had a more cultural approach and they had a framework that allowed the flexibility for each country to define what AI ethics meant for them according to their unique needs. And thirdly, I would say focus on fairness and inclusivity to reduce bias mishaps down the line. The last thing you want to do is, uh, be, is be caught up in a bias situation where one, it doesn't look good for your project, it doesn't good look, look good for your organization that you're representing, so actively work to identify and eliminate biases in AI systems by using diverse data sets and conducting regular bias audits. It's for the good of humanity, it's important that we're all, as leaders, using our platform to make sure that we're truly being inclusive. Um, and lastly, I would implement risk assessment and safety measures, especially in data privacy and, and within mitigating security breaches before they happen. The big, one of the core components of ethics is making sure that your content is secure. So conduct thorough risk assessments throughout your AI development pipeline to identify potential ethical and operational risks. Um, overall, this will help establish safeguard, safeguards to protect against misuse. And for developers, consider if you're interested in autonomous vehicles, since I mentioned today, there's projects called AutoWare, OpenPilot, Carla, um, and Apollo that are all open source that you can all contribute to and, and be a part of the AI revolution. So as we near the end of today's session, let's take a moment to reflect on where we started. One poor human decision that changed the course of my life forever. Now multiply that times millions. Even as we speak, road traffic accidents are occurring. I didn't let my tragedy be the end of my story, but for many others, it can and will be. For me, it was the beginning of a journey that brought me here, standing before you today, as a testament to the advancements in technology when used for good, and as a voice of survivors who are no longer with us. Today, we discussed the critical importance of ethics in AI, cloud computing, and the broader tech landscape, but the lessons from my story and the message that I hope you carry with you is that technology, no matter how advanced, is only as good as the intentions and care behind it. When we develop systems with empathy, inclusivity, and responsibility, we create tools that don't just advance society, they save lives. Autonomous vehicles powered by AI have the potential to drastically reduce the number of traffic accidents that devastate families and communities every year. But that potential is only realized when we as innovators and leaders commit to developing these technologies with ethical principles at their core. It's about ensuring that no one, regardless of their background, gender, geography, or social class is left behind. So today we're at a crossroads. Decisions we make now, the frameworks we establish today, and the ethics we hope will shape the future of technology for generations to come. As we move forward, remember that it's not just about what we can build, but how we build it and for whom we build it for. In the words of Confucius, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. I ask that you all rise to the challenge of continuing to build a tech ecosystem that values human life, dignity, and the common good above all else. So, I leave you with this challenge as you return to your work, your projects, and your communities. Ask yourselves, how can I contribute to building technology that truly serves humanity? How can I ensure that the tools we create are not just innovative, but ethical, inclusive, and just? So thank you all, and thank you for being part of the solution here, and for engaging in this crucial dialogue, and I look forward to staying in touch. So, thank you all.